Hi there, Ernie with Brood Home Farms. I'm here with Mark Forstell today. He is with Castleman Solar and he's a design engineer and I'm gonna let him tell you a bit more about himself and what we do. Hi, my name is Mark from Castleman Solar. I am one of the uh, NABSAP certified design engineer uh, team players here at Castleman. Uh, we recently worked with Ernie to build a rather large and impressive ground mount system here at the farm and I believe we're going to talk a little about that today. Yeah, all right. So uh, first, for the people who are going to be watching this and wondering if solar is right for them or if they should use it or not, tell me, tell me a bit about, like, um, who, who is solar good for? We're, at, at, the, at, the, at the far end of the spectrum, who's got the, you know, what you should be using for, for your setup? Okay, so everyone out there on the planet can benefit from solar energy. Okay. And I'm pretty passionate about that. All right. Um, in fact, I get a little too wound up at, uh, at these types of um, meet and greets, but um, I'll try to keep, my, keep the lid on it. But the, the sun is up there for all of us to share. Um, it's a clean, green, free source of energy that doesn't have any tariffs, doesn't have any inflation, uh, and God willing, it comes up every morning. Yeah. Um, so that said, uh, anyone that wants to buy the tools and contact a reputable company like Castleman to help design that system to harvest and harness that free, wonderful green power plant that's in the sky. Um, and then change that into the usable AC energy that we use and depend on every day in our lives for our homes. Um, I can't think of a person out there that could, uh, that could disagree with that. Now, that said, mm -hmm. um, there is a little bit of an initial financial investment, as you well know. Yeah, yeah. <laughs> uh, buying is. a monster of a system that sits out there that I'm sure will show some shots of. Oh yeah. Um, but it's tr you're trading in that one-time investment for um, for your ever-increasing energy bill that comes in the mail or to your direct deposit or, or however you pay your bills mm -hmm. every single month. And if you haven't noticed, it's going up every single month. Yeah. Now, Ernie has purchased a system. It cost him X amount of dollars. It doesn't have any inflation. It doesn't have any regulations from governments and weird things that are going on in the planet. Um, it's his to create his own energy. And I think that everybody can benefit from that, including myself. I've had solar on my own rather small house, small system um, in Scotia, New York for over uh, three years now. And I haven't bought a single kilowatt of electricity since then, and I love to tell people that. And it's a Castleman system, and I had it installed before I worked for them. So it kind of got me jump-started yeah. out of a, um, a boring, uh, tedious career in IT uh, into a much more exciting and rewarding. Uh, well, and it sounds like it was something that you could believe in. You saw totally. the benefits and thought, you know, this is for everybody. I totally, so I totally did. The day I had the meeting with the Castleman guy uh, that came to my house, I was just impressed with all of it. He gave me a, I, I really knew nothing except that I thought it was interesting and cool. And within two hours, I felt, you know, way more knowledgeable and was ready to, uh, you know, pull the trigger on going, going green and I never looked back. That's excellent. So um, we have, I think, different setups then because I have, I have a, a small farm or a large hobby farm here at Brood yeah. Home Farms and, uh, and, and Rhea and I, have a lot of space we were able to put in a ground mount system uh we had you know a great southern exposure for it and so for us yes. a lot of things were ideal it wasn't hard to imagine how to get a solar system here that would benefit us but like for those people who who are starting out a small sustainability uh project in, in like an urban farm and you know a rooftop farm yeah or it's just like a neighborhood like mine very yeah. small so little neighborhood cape. yep um, yeah, there's some limitations. I definitely, there definitely is. I see them every day. I go out and do site surveys on a regular basis. I'm a licensed drone pilot. I like to do, you know, accurate 
mapping of the site before I deliver a proposal. You're right. Yours was a no brainer. I rolled up the driveway and I was like, wow, is that really south? Yep. Holy cow. And then when you told me it was going to go right and where it was, I, I literally drew this nice little drawing and you could probably superimpose and switch that right into the actual real thing that's sitting up <laughs> without a tree in sight. So that's what, that's what we're getting at here. So one of the, um, one of the disadvantages, or if you were going to say who's, who's solar good for and who's it not for. So obviously it's good for everyone and good for the environment, good for the planet, good, exactly. good, for, yeah. good for your savings account, good for all that. But if you live in the woods, um, it's not going to get you a very good return on your investment because trees and solar, unfortunately, are not good friends. Uh, they don't play nice together. Uh, a big oak tree uh, on the south side of what of your solar farm mm -hmm. out here, your solar array out here, would be um, a major disappointment as far as your production because it would be casting the shadows and shade on it, reducing its ability to sit in the sun and make those electrons to produce that DC power that's going to go to AC power that's going to turn the lights on. Um, so, yes. My small house happens to be kind of south facing, kind of southeast. You know, it's all right. I, I would love to turn it a couple 20, 30 degrees to the yeah. south. And I did have to take a large, ugly tree down to benefit um, from it, which cost me a few dollars. But in the end, here I am three years later, three years later, without, you know, without buying electricity. And the cost has gone up and I've watched everyone go bananas about it. And I'm just sitting back here just paying my, I financed mine. Yeah. I don't know how you did yours, but I financed my system. So I basically traded in my ever increasing utility bill for a bank loan, for, a for basically like a car loan, yeah, just from a credit union. And I took a solar loan. Um, Castleman assists yeah. you with all of that, which was very simple. And I pay, I don't know, $109 a month for my little system. And so right up day one, I was saving like $20 a month. That mm -hmm. was three and a half years ago. By now I'm probably saving 40 or 50. Right. It's, okay. it's a no-brainer. Yep. It just keeps so going. So the up. initial investments that you had to make for it, they they paid themselves off yes. over time. Yeah, and a, a good a return on a, an investment for an average roof system like mine, mm -hmm. um, if you can be within seven to nine years, so obviously average eight years of what you call a return on investment, where that system has made its it's done enough work for you, it's paid itself off as far as um, covering your electricity bill. All right. That's very typical. Yeah. Uh, and that is factored, and it's part of what we have on our proposal, and part of my job is to deliver that data to, to a prospective buyer as a part of the design um, to let them know that, hey, you know, your system, I went to a house this morning where he, the guy was on his garage, due south, all the trees were down, his return on investment is going to be about five years. Yesterday I was at a place, east-west facing roofs, okay, not bad, return is going to be about eight and a half years. So, so well less than half of the life of the system, well, it, pay, definitely. it pays itself off. Oh, yes. It's certainly within within 10 years in almost the worst case scenario that I would design on. Yeah. You know, there comes a point where if, literally, like if we said, if you were in the woods and you called me and I looked at the imaging, maybe the way I do it, like Google Earth, and I said, are you really living in the woods? Like, is that really your accurate environment? And I would, and they say, agree, and, 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 and uh, you know, said, yes, indeed, I do. I would just simply tell them that maybe solar isn't good for you right. they at would this need, time. They would need a different project. If they were trying to continue with sustainability, they exactly. might have to use some other. Wind. Wind. Water. Okay. Whatever's coming down the pipe. Yeah. Or get a big chainsaw. <laughs> big chains off. I suppose they could. They could do something like that. Yeah, but, but there's, you know, I like trees. Don't get me wrong. I, yep. Everybody likes trees, but they, uh, trees and solar. Yeah. So, so if someone has a, a, a roof space that isn't obstructed. Yes, to the south, particularly. To the preferably, south, preferably. Yep. They can benefit from this system. This system will be able to to help them gain a sustainable impact on their their household lives. Yes. Yeah. It may not make them what we call net zero, like. I am fortunate and brag about it all the time. You know, my house uses 10,000 kilowatt hours of power. I know that's blah, 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 blah to somebody, but mm -hmm. that's what I, that's my electrical usage. Like that's how, if you were talking about your car, that's what you use for fuel to drive around every year. So that's what my electricity is, 10,000 K. And my system makes 10,000 kilowatt hours in a year. So in that year, I, I, my system's well designed so that I'm net zero so that I, I produce what I use. Right. So, and then we could get into the weeds maybe in part two about how that's working with net metering stuff. Yeah. We'll go in. Yeah. That's a whole nother, it, uh, it we'll leave inside. that to schedule a, schedule a consult with me. Yeah. I'd be happy to tell you about that. So, so on the project that we did here, um, 
I want to talk about what was included with that because yeah. we didn't have we didn't have uh, uh, extra costs that fell out of nowhere on on this project. It included the trenching. It yep. included the installation. It included the subcontractors. Permit pulling. Yeah, permit pulling. I I, I did not go to a town meeting once. Nope. I mm -hmm. didn't have to do that at all. These guys took care of that, and and it was nice for our setup doing that because I didn't have a lot, we didn't have a lot to have to worry about. We uh, we kept in contact with you guys over at, at Kesselman yep. and, and everything was taken care of for us. This has been a very uh, painless process that I would, I would personally suggest anybody be willing to do. Yes, that's awesome to hear. And that's exactly, my goal is to have everybody have the same experience that I had three years ago. Sounds like you had a similar one. It's been um, a great experience. So yeah, to kind of just expand on that. So what happens generally after I kind of step off the stage, so we entered, I entered, you know, I was introduced to you guys. I brought you a plan. We crunched some numbers. We decided what you wanted. We can talk about that, maybe show a little bit about that. In fact, it's still being completed right now with some of the electricians that are here. Mm -hmm. um, after signing the contract and, and working with me, mm -hmm to decide what you wanted. Uh, the next step is, for anyone that's interested, is that you're assigned your very own project manager. I kind of step off the stage at that point and move on to keep kind of cons doing consults and educating people as to what they can have and how it will benefit them. Mm -hmm. uh, and then the project manager, uh, his job is to be your main point of contact to the company um, for every aspect of the job, from pulling the permits to assisting with financing to all the interconnectivity fees with the utility, mm -hmm. there's an enormous amount of work that has to be done. Oh, yeah. And like Ernie said, he's not home on the phone talking to people about things he doesn't even know what he's talking about. Do you think he's going to want to talk to National Grid and find out when they're coming out to put on his net meter? I doubt it. No. Um, so, but our, our department, that department, which is all under the one roof, you know, that's an important thing to know is that we are all sitting in one office. We all wear the same shirts. We're all on the same team. You know, so yeah, there's I no finger I pointing. I didn't have to connect a bunch of different groups together exactly. to make it happen. Exactly. Except I, I know we subcontract out to the uh, the mount portion, but that's just the I never answer. had to do anything. You didn't have to do that. <laughs> yeah, you, you didn't lift the hammer or well, nothing, did you? Nope. Because somebody they uh, showed wrench. up. They they put it in the ground. They yeah. left. You guys showed up. Yeah. Mounted things to it. It that's worked awesome. out really well. That's awesome. Yeah, it is. It is a a Castleman does run a field to finish operation with. Uh, second to none customer support throughout and 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 for the remaining for the duration of the project's existence yeah we've been very impressed with Good. how with how uh easy it has been to talk with you guys contact you guys we're always up to date on what's going on it, it was definitely nice with all that we have going on because if you're starting a farm and you're trying to, to run a sustainability project like we are here, mm -hmm. um, you have you're going to have a lot on your plate. There is going to be a lot going on. Uh, you will be wearing many hats, going many places, um, except to sleep. <laughs> that won't be happening. And yeah. it was nice with with Castleman. We didn't have to worry about any of this. We contacted them. Mm -hmm. They took over everything for us. And you know we're here now towards the end of the project uh, having this discussion so that you guys can see you know how easy this was and if you can um, if you can get that initial you know momentum to, to get a project started it is absolutely worth it the ease of this for us has been phenomenal that's awesome to hear that's so great that's that's my goal uh, when I first meet people so I, I do hand the baton off to the you know, to the next team member, and then I can hope, like I said, we're all on the same team, that we're all going to pull through, and it, and it seems to be the case time after time, um, and, and, and like I said, even in my own personal experience. So I'm very happy that you guys are happy, and, and it sounds like the little sleep that you did find time for, it was, uh, you got some. Yes. yes <laughs> you were able to sleep in peace. In peace. Yes, absolutely. Yep. Good. Absolutely. Good. Tell me a bit about the different types of panels that are out there. If, if someone's looking to get this going, they're gonna see a lot of things online. They're gonna see different yeah. size of panels, different efficiency ratings of panels, micro inverters versus you yeah. know, string inverters. String yep. inverters. So, yes, that's true. Um, but let's start let's start with the panels themselves. What differences do we see out there in panels? 
Well, the the new look for roof mounts mm -hmm. now is now to be honest with you, Ernie, the science behind solar panels mm -hmm. really hasn't changed in many, many, many years. So the it, underlying engineering is the same. Right. The the invention, the the the, the way that solar works uh, hasn't changed. Okay, so that's DC power that's simply uh, a bunch of electrons that are excited by the irradiance, the sunshine, mm -hmm. that is uh, shining on them mm -hmm. and he heating them up and literally getting them moving around in a circle and they're dancing around in it. That's all it is. All right. It's really just the simplest concept in the world. So panels have... Of course, there are different places where you can get panels. You can get panels that are assembled in the United States, which I prefer, and which we mostly build. You can get panels that are assembled in uh, elsewhere that maybe are a little bit different quality. Um, overall quality, warranties are all different things you want to look into. Um, these are these are things you want to, the homeowner has to do their homework on. You're going to get what you pay for. Um, there are a myriad of different types. Mm -hmm. um, but in the end, the science is all the same for the panel. Where you're, where it does get kind of apples and oranges um, is with the inversion process from that DC power to AC. Okay. So for home rooftop mounts like myself, like my house, I'm sorry, like the system at my house that I have, are I prefer microinverters. Okay. All right. Microinverters are very, very safe. Uh, microinverters are wired in parallel. Microinverters are a, what they are is a very small inverter, size of like a large cell phone. Okay, which is, sounds crazy, but one of them, one microinverter is literally installed underneath or behind each solar panel. Okay. So it essentially takes that dumb solar panel that's just sitting in the sun with electrons moving around that's been happening for hundreds of years, and takes that and there's where the brains of the operation is right at the panel level in a micro in a micro inverter right literally underneath the panel the two lead wires come off the panel go right into this device the the switch from dc to ac is occurring right there at the panel it happens there it happens right there and nice clean super safe ac power is coming out the other side nice. so on your roof with your children sleeping like mine you know you are not worried about high voltage lines that are running across the roof uh rodents that could be gnawing their way through them if they were really, you know, bionic, I guess you could get through the conduit and everything. But of course, if it can happen, it will, right? So if it, these these are the things that people used to be scared about, about solar with this high voltage going across the lines in an older school system or a, you know, a typical string inverter system before some of the advents that have changed it. Um, but the, the, these microinverters literally eliminate the chance of any kind of an arc fault or a fire because you literally have no high voltage, you have clean AC coming off the roof and right into the uh, homeowner's service panel. That's excellent. So when our guys come off the roof with micro with a microinverter install, they're basically done the job. Now you have a little bit different system, which for a ground mount and a big system like that definitely makes sense. Yeah, and yeah. with you a battery going in there, you have you have a whole different animal. You have a big, you literally have a solar farm on your farm. Yeah, and, <laughs> so and that's, that's what works for us because exactly. we we have a, a like you said it's a farm it's a, a right. big hobby farm or a right. small farm however you look at it so for our setup it was it was definitely you needed some horsepower it was yeah it was a bit more economical for us to go in that direction rather yeah. than than what someone in a smaller area a smaller setting using a rooftop mount might might right. need or want and you're not as worried about these things. Uh, and I don't want to even be negative, but if, if there was to be a, a malfunction of some kind out there in that field that's 200 feet from your house, mm -hmm. that would be very unfortunate, but, but, it's not, but you're not going to be there. harmed. And you're, exactly. Right. I hate to use the even word burn or fire, right. <laughs> but um, these are these are what I, you know, th well, this is the difference between kind of like, you know, th there's many differences between the ground and, 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 and roof, you know, so yes. that would be one of them. So your, your system's over there cranking out some high voltage you got some high voltage coming right down trenched under the ground and coming yeah. right into your garage that's just going into your breaker box and right. into a battery and all that and it's all <laughs> awesome um and we can put that on a roof there's absolutely nothing wrong with it it's yeah. safe as hell it's like 
it's all permitted. Oh, it's yeah. all cold. The times have changed. Yeah, I mean, we've just come a different forward technology. a long way mm -hmm. in in solar technology now. But right. you know, you hear the stories. Right. You know, and, and that's always how it goes. A hundred rooftops get get solar power. One burns down. Everybody knows about the one that burned right, down. Right, right, you right. know, I, that's that's true. So the good thing is that with microinverters, there've been no that burn, none that burned down. Yeah, it's impossible. Yeah. And that's and that is the thing. The thing that's nice if someone's in a more suburban setting or they have a smaller farm that they're trying to start or, or yeah. like one of those one acre deals yeah having the micro inverters with a rooftop mount saves them both space and worry it's yes. a very safe system it is it's, it's pretty awesome I, I like them for residential which is a majority of my stuff being where i am up in Skyview County. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so so for batteries if someone wants a a, a backup system for their house yeah. how how many batteries do they need? How big is that? What do they need for depending on what they're going to do? Okay, so that's a really good question, and I hear that you know multiple times a day. So um, the problem with the question is that it varies immensely on the usage. Mm -hmm. So we can kind of just plain Jane it and say it like this. A battery, depending on the manufacturer that you go with, and we can supply you with the spec sheets, and you can do your due diligence to decide what's is best for you. We have LG batteries, which I believe you went with, yep. which are a large, large battery, a 16 uh, kilowatt hours per battery, which is amazing. Um, and then the end phase batteries are 10, but you can stack them up to four high, so you can have 40. So th these are, you know, they're, they're, we could go on and on and on about the batteries and, and, and whatnot. But the, it is more of a question of, well, how much battery do I need, which is exactly what you asked me, which I hear all the time. So you got to think of a battery as first of all. First of all, a battery. All a battery is for New Yorkers, okay? New Yorkers, not Californians, but New Yorkers, right. is a really cool, clean, green, maintenance-free generator. Period. Yeah. It is only being used when the grid is down. Now, now here's now that always leads to this other like back step backpedal so if you didn't realize this <laughs> that when the grid is down even with your awesome freaking 26k size solar farm that's sitting out in the field right there uh when the grid's down a beautiful summer day the sun is banging on that thing you are down mm -hmm. if you don't have a battery that is by design that is by law that is so that if the poor think about this because ernie's power plant out here is back feeding onto the grid and let's say that a garbage truck runs into the pole down there and we got a poor national grid guy going to do that repair yeah he has no idea you're sending god knows how much voltage back down yeah and we line. don't want to fry we don't want to fry no fry alignment no they're too good to us so <laughs> they're good dudes one of my neighbors is this one so and he's a beast i don't want him to go anywhere so uh <laughs> so um, anyway, by design, the system shuts down to one bolt just right there. Immediately, as soon as it senses the lack of the grid, it's down. Every solar system in the world that I know of, at least in the United States, does that. Um, it's on grid. Um, so grid grid time, let me clarify that. So a grid time system, which mm -hmm. is most the only thing we do. Um, now, how does that battery work if the grid is down? So with the battery like Ernie has, as I said, it's acting for him as a backup power. So instantaneously, just as fast as it stops uh, exporting power, it switches over to power his house, and I'm talking milliseconds, to run on battery. His clocks don't even need to be reset. The grid's down, and he didn't even know it. Yep. Um, and the battery's going to take over and become, the, now, the, now the property becomes what's called a microgrid. Now you're literally off the grid because mm -hmm. there's no grid. So the, your source of power is the sun and the battery. The, the sun fuels the battery. The battery powers the house. That's that's the generator. So just like the, if you think the power's out, what's the first thing you do? Well, you go out to the garage, get your Honda generator out, you fire it up, pour some ninety-one, put some, in put it. some <laughs> gas in it, yeah, pull the hell out of it till it starts. Have a heart attack while you're trying to do it. Run the wires in the house. Tell the kids to shut up and take a cable and just turn their Wi-Fi on. And, yeah. You know, and this is all that. You know, this is what I do. I don't have a battery. I do this. Yeah. You know, I'm gonna have a battery the way the world's going crazy <laughs> right now. But, but right now, I don't have one. But it's, it's on my it's on my radar. So. Um, that said, to, the, it, it goes back to the, the, the question I hear all the time, well, how big does it need to be? So 
one bat. Let's just go. We'll keep it simple. One battery. Castleman considers one battery, be it the 16 or a 10 kilowatt hour size battery. One of them, we consider that a partial home backup. What that means is you will identify three to maybe five, maybe six essential loads in your breaker box panel, in your service panel. Um, One of them is definitely going to be your refrigerator freezer. Because yeah. that costs you money. Yeah. All right. So the grid goes down. That's all your food spoils. You definitely are not happy. So there's one. That's a no-brainer. That's an essential load that you want to be on and powered and backup powered by your battery. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so a lot of people figure Wi-Fi is one. You want to have your Wi-Fi. Yep. A lot of people would like a receptacle or two to charge their cell phone so that they could stay in the loop of what's going on as far as communications. Um, maybe a couple of lights. And then a weird one. That, heater, uh, how, definitely a well pump. Now, see, well I, pump see I, I'm a city boy, so I am on city water. So for a country boy, mm -hmm. a well pump is essential. Yeah. That's essential. Yeah. You're going to go days without water? No, exactly. No. So for me, so, the well right. pump is one of those services. Right. So that's right up there with the refrigerator. Yeah. Might not you know, have Wi-Fi B. Yep. You know, so, in fact, I know it does. Yeah, water has the Wi-Fi. <laughs> <on the, on laughs> unless you're, unless you're, you're, if you had a teenager, they would disagree. Well, yeah. if it was a, if it was a, if it was a boy. <laughs> uh, so uh, anyway, um, so that's that's what's there. Th that's how we look at it. Then you can start with one battery. That's one of the nice things, and you can always add on to it to add a second battery to it that essentially doubles the capacity and the power by adding another battery. Mm -hmm. And a lot of times that's a much cheaper investment because you already have all the components that make up the microgrid. Yeah. All the switching components, all everything that's required to make a microgrid with the battery. So the first one's the killer, and then the next one's just kind of throw them on there. They're a fraction of the price of the first investment. Yeah. Um, so the two batteries, Castleman's, again, in general, two, two batteries, whether they LG or N phase, two batteries are what we consider a whole home backup, and that's when you can take a whole home, maybe not a big farm, but a whole home like my little tiny house, mm -hmm. and literally go uh, run all of the appliances except for maybe like space heaters, uh, window yeah. unit air conditioners. The, the super nice cities you're going to leave it. But everything else, the can opener would work. All the kitchen devices would work. Right. Everything's going to work uh, as it would if the grid was up. Yeah. That's whole home backup as opposed to partial home backup. So that's pretty much the difference. What it comes down to is me meeting with you and identifying, well, like, what do you have there? What are you? What what are your? What's your usage? Right. Are you a uh, a woodworker and you work in your shop all the time and that's essential and you have to have those these jigsaws and things right? Well, then we need some serious power to back you up. Yeah. If you're like Absolutely. me and you're just like eh, the fridge and the Wi-Fi and a light, I'm good. I could do it on a, on a little tiny battery. Yeah. So, it's it's a it's a tricky question. There is no perfect answer because the faster you suck the fuel out of that battery, because remember it's just a generator. The sun is the fuel. If you turn on six space heaters, you just ran that sucker dry yeah. in an hour. Yeah. If you're nice and you just like, all right, I'll use one LED light, my phone charger, and my fridge, and I'll even turn it down a couple of notches. Go days. Yeah. So there's, there's no, it's being, well, Ernie, it's been a pleasure working on your project. I'm so happy I got to come back to revisit it and see it being completed. I'm going to come back again soon when it's really completed and I want to see those batteries and I want to see that nice inverter on the wall. I want to check it all out oh, absolutely. And, and I'm just excited for you. I think you guys are awesome and this the whole experience has been so fun for me. So like Ernie, I'd love to do the same thing for you. My name is Mark Forstell from Castleman Solar. I am one of the NAPSAP certified PV design engineers. Uh, we're ready to go and ready to install your system. We have all the inventory in stock. We have all the know-how or all under one roof and we've got everything you need to get the job done just the way you want it. That's our goal. Customer service, second to none. And with that, I look forward to talking to all of you. Drop me a line. I'm sure they'll include my um, contact information uh, below. Thank you. Absolutely. This is Thank you for being with us. This is Ernie with Brood Home Farms, and we hope to see you again. Have a good day.